Johnston. So I am so privileged to be here tonight and I um, thank you all for coming. I think this is something we really don't talk about enough and quite frankly, I think we're getting it wrong the way we're dying in Australia. So um, let's just have a look at this. This is what, what we're dying of at the moment. So look at all this, suicide, accidental deaths for young people, assault. When we're older, we're dying of dementia and other diseases. I know cancer is a terrible thing to die of, but not all of us are dying of that. So what's happen happening to the rest of us? When we look at us as females, we are, the main cause of death is, is dementia and Alzheimer's in Australia. The leading cause of death for males is cardio um, coronary heart disease. Cancer gets a little look in here, but then we've got um, chronic um, respiratory disease and stroke and cardiovascular disease. Where do we hear about this in the media? Where do we hear about this in research? Where do we hear about this? We don't, we hear about cancer. It's the only thing we hear about. People with a diagnosis of cancer versus dementia using specialist palliative care services is very low. 75% of people with cancer get to see someone from specialist palliative care versus 2.4% if you've got dementia. <laughs> Boo! Boo! If we have a look at this, how we die, so sudden death, I'm going to include suicide in here, I'm going to include murder, I'm going to include um, things like um, uh, voluntary assisted dying. We're, we've got this, this space here that we're not really doing anything about, in my opinion. We've got cancer here. We put a lot of effort, a lot of money, a lot of research into this period of time for death for people with cancer. When we have people with chronic illnesses, every dip of these is someone who goes into hospital and every chance, every dip, I think, is an opportunity to, for us to have a chat about what's important to you now. How can we get this right for you? Do you actually want to have antibiotics or medical treatment? Or is this your time to go home and, and have other things like being with your family, um, being in a place that you want to be, not actually sticking in hospital? And then we have this, this um, frailty and dementia, which we're really doing really badly about. How can we provide the services that we do for this group in this amount of time over years for this group? We can't, and we're not doing well with it at all. In Canberra, we actually have the Medical Treatment Act, and, and lots of people don't understand that we have this, that we've got a law here that says, um, and it's to protect the rights of patients to refuse unwanted medical treatment. It's also to ensure the rights of patients to receive relief from pain and suffering to the maximum extent that is reasonable in their circumstances. People don't know about this in, in Canberra. They don't understand it. They don't know that we have this law. I go back to Irving Goffman, um, who I learnt about in probably 1990, and it's really shaped the way that I think and um, really gave me some passion about doing things differently. So first of all, when he was talking about services, service models for mental hospitalisations, but as with other competencies, there are special points of strain in fitting the treatment of the body into the service framework. He goes on to say, the very willingness of clients to put their body's fate in the hands of their physician carries its own problem for medical men. <laughs> they may find that sympathy, with the patient subjects them to emotional stress when they are uncertain of what is wrong, what can be done, and um, when, when they can't do anything about. They talk about this thing called the non-person treatment, um, where they say that, um, found in the medical world, whereby the patient is greeted with what passes as civility and said farewell to in the same fashion, with everything in between as if the patient were weren't there as a social person at all, 
but as a possession that someone's left behind. We think of the medical model, and I, I'm sorry, but I don't think it's working at the moment. I, I, I know that we've only got a few more minutes, so. Um, <laughs> the medical model at the moment is, um, it leaves people feeling like um, they don't fit into the system. They're, they're not, their diagnoses or whatever's going on with them isn't, isn't working. Just a good death, oh, sorry, this is a bad death. 86-year-old woman with vascular dementia, she has a fall and fractures a hip. She's transferred to hospital from a residential aged care facility on a Saturday. Family live interstate and due to COVID, they can't visit. Her hip is repaired and four days later, um, she gets delirium and, and pneumonia and pressure injuries and she dies 10 days after her fall and she's alone. That's a bad death. A good death. Um, I met a man, 74 year old, who had bowel cancer, chronic obstructive pulmonary disease and he lived in a, in a nursing home. And the day that I met him, he said, can you actually give me the pill? Can you, t can you take my life? Because I can't do this anymore. And I said to him, what is it about living that's making it unbearable. He said, he said to me, I, ha I can't breathe, I piss my pants and I can't get to the toilet, I, I pee in a nappy, I've been kept alive for the last two years and I have nothing now, I can't breathe, I've got extensive pain and the only thing that I think that I can do is to stop eating and drinking. So that's what I did 10 days ago. I said to him, what if I could help you with your pain and your breathlessness? Would you have a drink for me? We, we had a contract. <laughs> he had, I said, what would you like to drink? And he said, apple juice. So he had 10 of those, 10 apple juices. And he had, and he had, um, he, he kept drinking and we kept talking. And I started a syringe driver because we have the law that says that I can treat him, give him the treatment that he deserves and relieve his suffering, I did that. I started a syringe driver. I gave him everything he needed. For 10 days, he drank, he ate, he reconnected with his family, and then he died. He had a good death. Do you know why? Because I knew him. I knew what he wanted. I understood him. He was a person in front of me. How can we improve the experience of dying? Opportunity for social and natural science to improve the, the quality of dying and bereavement. This is an urgent need. Funding for research concerned with care, not only cure. Funding for services that are equitable for all Australians, regardless, regardless of their age, where they live, or what their diagnosis is. At the moment, specialist palliative care doesn't think that they do any work with anyone who doesn't have cancer. Dying is a normal part of life and it is essential that investment is forthcoming that prioritises good dying. Thank you.